Emmanuel was a former Nigerian banker who masterminded one of the biggest finical scams in the history. Using his position of power, he created a fake airport and sold it for 242 million, leaving investors and authorities stunned. We will take you on a wild ride through the interact details of Emmanuel's fraud. Get ready for an eye-opening journey into the world of finical crime. Emmanuel Nude, the masterminded behind the scam, was born in 1952 in Anbrama State, Nigeria. He previously worked as a director of the Union Bank of Nigeria. His banking background gave him access to the knowledge, documentation, and links that made him more believable when it came to executing his scams. Emmanuel's experience as a bank director meant that he had ample knowledge of how to conduct himself in a business setting and properly had a certain confidence about him that put his victims at ease. It's impressive how he used his skills and background to carry out such a complex scheme, even if it was illegal. So, it was 1995 and Emmanuel was trying to make some quick cash. He was feeling pretty confident since he used to be the director at Union Bank of Nigeria. He figured he could come up with a plan to make a ton of money fast. So, he picked up the phone and started calling some major banks across the world. And guess who answered? Nelson Sakaguchi, the director of Brazil's Banco Noreste. You might wonder, why Nelson picked up the phone for a nobody like Emmanuel? Well, when Emmanuel called him, he was not a nobody. He pretended to be Paula Guna, who used to be the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria back in the day. So, Emmanuel was like, Yo, Nelson, homie, I got the sick opportunity. All Nelson had to do was to invest $242 million in a new airport being built in Apuja, the capital of Nigeria. Emmanuel was like, bro, if you do this, I will hook you up with a $10 million cut. Nelson was like, duty, I'm in, let's make this paper. He knew he was only playing with the bank's assets, so he didn't think it was a big deal. That's when Emmanuel and his crew had him. Over the next three years, Nelson wired all the $242 million to Emmanuel's forking bank accounts. But since he couldn't have all the money to his name, he had five other duties helping him out with this deal. They all opened bank accounts in a foreign countries. This was money the Nigerian government couldn't track. Nelson Sakaguchi, the head of Banco Noreste, was taken into the office of Jamie Lopez, one of the bank's major shareholders. Mr. Lopez had been asking Nelson to bring him the papers for the past three years, and he was constantly making excuses as to why he could not. So he grabbed him by the neck and got all up in his face. I need to see the numbers and I need them now. It was at this point that Nelson spilled the beans because there had been a lot of activity on the account of Banco Noreste, which was located in Cayman Islands. And one of the most notable heads of the bank, who led the overseas department of the institution of New York, had nothing left to say except the truce, which had begun in 1995. Nelson received the fax from someone named Tarathia Williams, the supposed director of budget and planning at the Nigerian Ministry of Aviation. The fax told the story of a Nigerian citizen who told the Ministry of Aviation that Bank Honoriste was interested in making an investment in their value government project. Nelson's eye expanded and he immediately called them back. He was interested in investing in Abuja, Nigeria's newly stated capital. And it just so happened that Emmanuel informed Nelson that the government was looking for a foreign investor for the project. As a smart banker and a second investor, Nelson immediately accepted the deal. But no one could have predicted the merger of Banco Noreste with Banco Santander in 1997. And so Nelson was in difficult situation. You see, 
on the one hand he wanted to make the 10 million dollars in commission but on the other hand families like Samuelson and Cochrane wanted to make sure the box were cleared before the merger would take a place but that was impossible Nelson didn't have an answer to the question why two-fifths of the bank total value and half their capital had been sitting in the Cayman Island things began to unravel back in December of 1978. The scandal and the investigations spread to the countries all over the world, and countries like Brazil, Britain, Nigeria, Switzerland, and the United States of America were all involved in the investigations. In the end, the Samson and Cochran families had to pay the $242 million out of pocket, and the bank collapsed only three years later, in 2001. Don't be a scam victim. Be a subscriber and smash that subscribe button. Despite the fact that the scam happened between 1995 and 1998, Emmanuel and his friends were only brought to court in 2004. Because of the case complexity, specialized investigations were required. As a result, the criminal investigations did not begin until 2002. This is when Nigeria's president, Olusugan Obusano, created the Economic and Finical Crimes Commission, EFCC. When the scammers were taken before the Abuja court, they were charged with over 100 counts of frauds. First, they stated that they were not guilty as one of the scammers confessed, their defense started to fall apart. Emmanuel attempted to escape justice by attempting to pay the EFCC head 75,000 in cash. Things did not go well for him, since the chairman declined the offer, resulting in the addition of further fraud charges to Emmanuel's case. Nelson Sakaguchi, the guy conned into paying for non-existent airport, was called as a witness by the prosecutors in the case. Following his evidence, Emmanuel and the others of his team pleaded guilty. Emmanuel was sentenced to five years in jail and charged 10 millions by the federal government. Plus, the court further took all of his assets and returned them to the scammed bank. Even so, Nigeria did not keep its side of the deal, and Emmanuel was released a year later in 2006. After this, he filed a lawsuit against the government in an attempt to get back his personal assets. And guess what? They agreed. We are talking about corruption here, but this strange combination of lies and criminal acts does not stop there. In the summer of 2016, Around 200 people attacked the city of Okpo, killing four police officers and one security guard at a construction site. During the investigation, the police discovered that the 200 people were from the Apanja community, which had land conflicts with the Dankufa area. Emmanuel was determined to be involved in this attack by the Amparia State Police Command, and he was arrested on 27 charges of murder, tourist attacks, and attempt to murder. Despite the fact that he was being held at the Agauka jail in Anambra State, unfortunately, we don't know where he is today. And based on what we know about his story and the corruption he is causing, I believe he is free right now, living his life. Before we say goodbye, please subscribe, like, and view my previous video about the fire festival disaster. It's a terrible story about what not to do when preparing for an event, full of blown tents, wet beds, and a lot of disappointment. So subscribe and show some love with the light.